Hello everyone, welcome back to my European Space Agency RP1 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. We have here the Looney 4 which we launched in the previous episode and I've decided that it's not collecting as much science from low lunar orbit as I wanted to. Uh, it's collected a bunch from high orbit, it's got the mass spectrometry too and the micrometeorite is almost finished and but it still needs to do mass spectrometry 3. Uh, that's going to take 55 more days. So we want to keep it partly in high orbit, but it's just not doing enough in low orbit. So let us bring its orbit down so it spends more time down there. Because low over the moon is pretty low. Okay, ignition. This will just guarantee that it spends more time in the low region. I forget the exact altitude, let's see. Yeah, it hasn't even gotten mass spectrometry 3 and micrometeorite detection low at all. Got something else down there. Looney 2 is right under us. How's about that? Okay, hopefully that'll help the science accumulation. Back to Space Center. Alright, we have in fact gotten some extra moon space low science and we've got enough to unlock the volcano. And so we've got that queued, and now I will mock up the Vulcane launcher, the Vulcane version of the Arcturus launcher that we will be using in our new pad, which will be done in four days, and we'll take a look at that. All right, so here we are. This is the Lunar Mission V for Vulcane, and we've got the Mark 1-3 pod. We've got a much more full service module here. Uh, you'll note that it's somewhat Orion-inspired in shape, uh, but we have the RCS thrusters right at the bottom uh, instead of on the side. And we don't have the solar panels because we are using the fuel cells at the top so that we can recover them. And the center engine here, it's a little bit risky, but we're using one of the RZ-20 Mark IIs. Uh, we'll see how this goes for us. We've got the MLI layers, and of course this will launch only when they're ready to land. And so the fuel has to hold out for about, the, let's say, two weeks. But really, all it has to do is hold out for... Uh, through the trip to the moon and then capture and then the return burn and it doesn't have to stick around for after the return burn. We do have uh, MH and MON3 backup in these tanks and we're using the 3.6 kilonewton thrusters there and so if we have those separate as our backup system, let's say we've dumped all the Hydrolox fuel from here, uh, they have 782 meters per second which should be just enough to get back home kind of thing. Uh, especially if we haven't fully captured. So, uh, otherwise, I mean, if we fully, fully captured, it's a little bit tight. But um, uh, let's set that aside for now. Uh, we are looking to just basically capture around the moon with this and then return. It's not carrying the land or anything. So the combined amount, 2,162, if all the systems are burned at the same time, uh, is pretty good. Uh, we expect about 800 to capture and 800 to return. Uh, assuming we don't do anything crazy. Uh, next stage is actually another RZ-20 stage. We've got three of them this time, I call this the Griffin 3, and it has 3,600 meters per second to a complete orbit and then transfer. It's got a 42-ton controller that we will have to tool. Uh, it's a new deep space large-scale avionics. Uh, the reason it's large-scale avionics is because of the lander. In, with the lander, this is going to try to capture it around the moon. Uh, so it is not uh, that way the lander doesn't have to have a separate RZ-20 stage to do that But that is a tricky business uh, Well, we'll see how it works out. Maybe we'll have to come up with a different arrangement uh, But at least they relight and they've been pretty reliable and the mark twos should be more reliable than the mark ones So we have three they are tilted and that's about their burn time uh, If one fails then hopefully they'll be able to extend their burn time, but that's how it is. Now we don't have the 3 meter core, we have the 4 meter core. And what you'll note is that we've got a bunch of stacked uh, balloon tanks here <laughs> as our core. And that's because these are the balloon tanks that we already tooled for the stage that had 4 HM7s. We're not using the HM7s anymore, I don't like them. So we, are, we, we just used the same tanks but we stacked 4 of them Kerbal style because that's what they force us to do because I don't want to tool them again by making one big huge one. It'll probably cost a lot even though it's the same diameter. And then we have the Volcane 1 here. For reference, the Volcane 1 is 326 seconds ISP sea level, 431 in vacuum. And again, I copied the test flight stuff from the existing RO engine config in the RO folder. 
its current reliability is not great and so hopefully we're getting going to get some data on it. Uh, we'll have a separate tug mission that we'll send over to the moon first and so this will be an emergency system that's going to hang out around the moon and it'll be hypergolic and it'll be able to dock with everything and uh, move things around if they need to be moved around just in case something bad happened. And we're using propellant only docking ports because they're lighter and so the Kerbals will have to EVA between things and hopefully that'll be alright, I'm not sure. Kerbalism, we usually lose nitrogen between things when we EVA and I don't know how the jetpacks exactly work around here in this version. They seem to change that every now and again. So we will see. Otherwise, we've got the Viking 5B engines on the boosters as before. That has not changed. And you can see our stats up there. So the first two stages, well, not really the first two stages, the boosters plus the core will get us close to orbit. Then the RZ-20 stage will complete orbit and then boost us to the moon. And then this will capture and then return is the plan. So we will see how that plan works out for us. Those go there. But we can't build it yet. We have a lot of unlocking to do. We have plenty of unlock credit though. We're pretty close. Uh, we really just need to get the uh, technology unlocked and then we'll be ready to go. Let's take a look at the lander. The lander will launch uncrewed and so it has, I mean the crewed launch also has a controller anyway, but it has its controller up here, large scale avionics, 13 tons and you can see we're right at 13 tons and the lander has 2668 for the final phase of landing and then getting back to orbit and then probably docking. We've got lots of RCS thrusters there, we've got RCS thrusters down here, very powerful because we're just using these 3.6 kilonewton thrusters to land and you know how they have that imbalance thing. We've got them tilted but just in case there's more imbalance stuff going on we've got the RCS thrusters to hold it. And Obviously these don't throttle, but the cutoff line that I've used for what we can use if it's not a European engine was the Air B, specifically the AJ-10-27. So what we can use is the Lunar Module Ascent engine, but that doesn't throttle. Uh, so we could use that, but it doesn't throttle. And what we can't use is the Lunar Module Descent engine, and that does throttle. So we have to use these unthrottling things, but they have infinite ignitions, so we'll just do that and hope that goes well. Uh, but uh, we can test it without any crew initially so we'll see if that works out for us. Um, but yeah we have this stage this is just another bunch of 3.6 kilonewton thrusters I mean I would love to use the block D engine or something like that but we can't. Uh, so that would be the natural thing here that's how the N1 mission would have done it. It started descent this is what this does it's gonna start descent and then this will land. Uh, this does not capture us into orbit though like I said before uh, this stage with the RZ-20s is gonna capture us into orbit and so we see the two launch stages well actually the boosters and the launch core and then this will boost us to the moon capture us around the moon and then the rest happens. So we'll see if that works out for us. This has its own swing to do though. The core on this stage is the same. This tank is the same as on the other launchers. So uh, most of this unlock is not new, but um, I think the pod is uh, needs to be unlocked. We're just using the Mark 1, not the Mark 1 Advanced. So it's just one person going down. I'll review the contracts, but I assume that one is fine because um, they would have allowed for the Soviet version. Okay, so that is our lunar lander mission. However, before any of that, we are going to send over a tug, and this is the tug. It also has the 3.6 kilonewton thrusters with the infinite ignitions and everything, and it's just a tank with some RCS thrusters, solar panels, uh, comms inside, of course, and uh, we don't have a separate antenna because it's not relaying science or anything like that. And of course, oh, that's the Apollo, oops. We want the, I initially put the Apollo docking system because I wanted to be good about things, but turns out uh, the Delta V was nicer, so I opted for the Delta V, so we better put that on. Okay, 
Uh, uh, tremendous burn time, 26 minutes, but it's not going to use it except for in emergencies. In fact, uh, the stage down here will once again be asked to capture it into orbit and we'll see if that works for us with this. And uh, that all being said, it will then hang out and then we will use it for emergencies. So that will be the first thing we launch and we'll see if it works and it'll give the Vulcan its first test and give the RZ-20s more of a workout since they're the upgrade version to Mark II's which we don't have full data for and yeah let us wait until we can actually use it well ELA-6 is complete and I'm going to make sure it has the ground service equipment it needs so we'll queue that up while we're waiting for the science to come in well, I guess with all the hydrolocks, the renovate cost is special. 54000 to renovate it. I'm basing it on the lunar tug. Maybe I shouldn't. Let, let's just base it on the mission. I don't know. Uh, let, let's, uh, we'll, we'll launch this first anyway, so let's renovate. Okay, well... The budgeting continues. Uh, whoa, we just got like a huge chunk of science here. 262.9 just came in somehow. I mean, uh, lots of stuff came in. Oh, from Sun Space Low suddenly. I don't know how that happened. Sun Space Low? How low is low? D did something get flung close to the sun? Is it still alive? <laughs> I mean, so many questions. I mean, the Moho missions are close. I don't know if anything merits demise, but Sunspace Low sounds like it should be lower than Mercury orbit. I mean, maybe they cut in, but I would expect it to be much lower. I don't know how we got Sunspace Low. I don't know exactly what level Sunspace Low is at, but it sounds lower. So, I don't know what sent it. Maybe it was these and just cutting into Mercury, you know, on this side of Mercury orbit was enough, but... Well, we got lucky somehow. Well, I feel like we should spend some stuff, huh? Well, we're trying to land on the moon. I suppose we should... queue up some surface science. And we're trying to go into deep space, maybe some deep space science too. We'll probably get the Jupiter stuff at some point. The Jupiter program. We're sending a probe to Jupiter already. Well, what better way to spend your science data than more science? We're actually in the dip down here. I don't know why there's a dip down here, but there's a dip down here. This is still just chugging, even though we're done. We'll wait. Space programs do a lot of waiting. 1960s aside. Okay, we've got our science. Let's try and queue something up. We're gonna have to tool that new avionics core that's on the Griffin 3 stage. We have to tool the tank for the Griffin 3 stage, which is uh, not a balloon tank. Maybe I should make it a balloon tank instead. We could just make it one of these. Oh, right. I couldn't do that because of the MLI layers. We need the MLI layers so it can hold out until we get to the moon. And these balloon tanks do not have MLI layers. So we can't use the balloon tanks. That's why we have to tool that again. Um, and then that's the core for the actual probe up there. I mean, the tug. And that core is the same as we're using on the lander. So that seems all appropriate okay and now we've got unlock cost of 305,000 which is the volcano engine purchase okay engineer cap 2165 and we don't know how long it's gonna let's say current or maximum 84 days integration time if we have like 2,000 people there it's gonna take a bit uh, it's not that expensive, 49000 so that's good. But then again, the crude capsules will take more. 
This is just a tug. Alright, let's build one. Well, net change in funds, just with the people we have there right now, is it's cost negative, so... Alright, I, I want to keep that positive. We want to be able to build other things. Uh, can't see anything around here. We can upgrade the tracking station. But maybe it is not the time, since we're focused on shorter range missions. We're waiting quite a long time, though. Oh well, at least we're doing science. Ah, oh, Viola's retired before we could risk her life once again. Probably a good idea. Probably a good idea. She managed to survive, folks. Planting flags. So we're probably going to need that upgrade, too. Planting flags. Very important, apparently. Crude lunar orbit we can do much quicker. This one does require plant a flag. Here, the targeted one. That's Apollo 12. And more targeted things. Well, Lunar Tug launch is almost ready to go. We should do it. Roll out as a while. And expensive. Okay, so first test of the Vulcan with the Arcturus rocket. Our new heavy-ish launch vehicle. I, I don't know if it qualifies as a heavy. It's sort of borderline. It's like 30 tons. It's meant for... Uh, actually, it's probably more than 30 tons now that we've got the Vulcan core. So it's more than 30 tons, but probably not too much more. Let's see what we get into orbit, actually. Okay, we should be headed north. SAS on, throttle is up. Will the volcano light? Let's see. Seems to. And launch. So, that's 25 engines. Not bad. I feel like lag is definitely occurring. Sound has just changed. We're past the speed of sound. Nice day for a launch. Did I have the G-force mitigation? I do. We shut off half the engines on the boosters for the G-force mitigation. We don't have to worry about G-forces on the Volcane stage, so... Still well within their burn time and everything. They've got, uh, more than three minutes. Okay, separation. Booster separation is nice. Very quiet Volcane engine. Alright, fairings. Plenty to make orbit. Oh, six minutes left, actually. I'll take it back. Maybe we should pitch up. Total available burn time on the Volcane is just 20 seconds shy of 10 minutes. Yeah, no big problems. We could probably have just pointed at the prograde vector and it'd be fine. We are definitely planning equatorial missions to the moon, so... We don't want any inclination to the moon right now. Oh, it quit on us early. That's uh, a little bit sad, but this is the tug mission, and the tug can finish things off no matter what, basically. I do want to see if this can hold out until we get to the moon with its delta V, or how much delta V. Okay, well, that's uh, circular, no circular enough orbit, and it's actually one and a half hours exactly. Okay, but we lost about 400 meters per second compared to what I wanted. But we are pretty much perfectly in line with the moon. And we're 38 tons. So, I mean, we're carrying the stage as well. But technically, I think the volcano, if it hadn't quit early, we should have been able to place us into orbit directly if we wanted it to. So, uh, I would say that this is at least capable of launching 38 tons, if not a little bit more. And that's what I want right there. Okay. This is a deep space core here, so we have very low power draw during time warp. 
I thought about putting four of the engines on here, but we'll see how reliable they are. That's just a reliability thing, because the tank is sized to their burn time. Okay, we really should be going. It turned slower than I expected, because it's heavier than normal. Come on, go to the node quickly. Okay, well... Ignition. There we go. Alright, halfway through the burn, everything is looking good. Here it comes in... Okay, we can do the rest of RCS. So, good burn. But we only have 331 meters per second left instead of enough to actually capture. I mean, we have enough. I mean, it will capture us, actually, but not to the low orbit. Whether we want to be in a low orbit, that's a good question. Maybe capturing into a high orbit initially is fine, too. But let's see. So we're starting off with 331, and we'll see how much we have when we get there. Boil-off is definitely happening on the hydrogen, not on the oxygen. Okay, um, I'll take that periapsis for the moon. Still hasn't changed our stage delta V. We've definitely lost some hydrogen. Oh, now it's 330. We lost like one meter per second so far. So I would say this stage is good for capturing us around the moon. With the lander. Okay, ignition. All three lit. And we've captured. And I'll just expend it. Okay. Alright. Separation. Make sure the tug is in good working order. It's got its 26 minutes. And yeah, we'll have it keep this, ro uh, keep this orientation. So I'll rotate. This is fine. It's got no additional science or anything. Do we have... We have, we, sh we have a little bit of power on here, and we have the RCS, so I think maybe at Apoapsis we can deorbit this and smack it into the moon. Bonus Lunar Impactor. Plenty to spare. We'll crash into the moon with definiteness. Okay. I, I'm in the mood to follow it down, charge. Okay. Oh. All right. That has been disposed of. Okay. So the first launch of the Arcturus was successful. We are going to try to build this with the Mark 1-3 command pod. I will oversize the heat shield a little bit more. I, I did poke it out. You can see that, but uh, we seem to need more. So um, like that, but it doesn't make me happy. <laughs> Uh, it doesn't make me happy at all, but can we get these to be a different size? So yes, and that's Lunar Heat Shield, top level there. And that seems okay to me. Uh, so what are we unlocking here? We need to tool some fairings, that's not a surprise. The avionics score, do we really need 15? It's just a little bit above 13 tons. Maybe we can use the same 13 ton unit we just did. 0 0.001. <laughs> okay, I better not risk it. All right, that still gives us 2,000 out of an expected uh, 1,000. What we want is 1,600 minimum. Uh, so then we can tool the avionics. Uh, uh, make sure the avionics is the same one that we've already tooled. Now we don't have any big tooling to do. Just little fairing stuff. And no unlocks. So this is ready to go. The GSC looks fine. And we'll get more data on that volcano. So let us... The integration time is a problem though. Don't crew capsules. Hmm. And that rollout time is no good either. We have to pay attention to the Jewel 1 that's got a maneuver there. I forget whether that was a mid-course correction or whether it's the actual arrival. Possibly the arrival, we'll see. Okay, but staff... Uh, we're not making a whole lot of money. 
I'll put who I can there and we'll lose a little bit of money. It looks like we'll be done by October. <laughs> well, I need more engineering efficiency, so I'll queue this science up. Researchers are doing fine, there's not a big backlog. Okay, let's quickly take a look at what's happening with the Jewel 1 there. Oh, it's arriving alright. It has a red line back, but it has a line back. So it might be alright. Or it might lose power once we turn to it. Is there even a flyby? It doesn't actually require things to be a new probe. So if there was a Jupiter flyby mission, we could have fulfilled it, but... I don't know. Let's not do that. We'll just keep milking the small bodies flyby, which pays more because it was fast anyway. Oh, this one actually uh, can be fast now. So, okay. Well, let's see. Let's see if our probe can actually make orbit around Jupiter. Okay, well, hopefully it started transmitting. Yeah, so we've got Jupiter space high visible imaging and everything. Mass spectrometry, but it's power draw. Well, hold on, it wasn't pointing its panels properly yet. Well, during time warp, how is it? Uh, it's recharging. Okay, it's only got 477. And let's say 400 after this correction, but how much would it take to capture? That's barely a capture. We could do it. But I don't think that would fulfill the contract. Yeah, no. But it's definitely more than that maximum periapsis. Oh, wait. That's the periapsis. It's not the apoapsis. Oh, uh, well, yeah. I mean, it, it never sat well with me to try and milk this out, even though we're leaving nearly 2 million on the table here. All right. Let's complete that program. Let's see if we can do Jupiter observation, since this probe seems capable of it. Got the RTGs. I spent all that science unlocking the RTGs after all. Okay. Let me take the Jupiter orbit one. Power is good as we approach our correction here to bring ourselves closer to Jupiter. One thousand five hundred and fifty kilometers. Well, let's just get as low as possible. Comms at periapsis should be fine. Well, I'll, I'll leave it right there, and we'll redo this. That's what we have with some margin for reorienting to the sun. Not the best, best orbit, but probably pretty good for Jupiter observations. That's in 81 days, though. So, we have to wait. And for our capture burn, I am going to give, our, uh, give us about 48 hours of buffer time. But yeah, we'll just have to leave it hanging out here. It's got some science to do, but not a whole lot. Just the quickie stuff. Probably we won't have too much to do before we get back to it. One thing we should do is make sure our astronauts are ready for uh, the Mark 1-3 pod. And also the little lander cabin. Landing. Okay, well it's under landing. Okay, so proficiency landing. We'll have our pilot do that. Sebastian is already ready for Apollo. Uh, Nancy's not ready for Apollo. So you know what, actually, I'm going to change that. Training. Nancy will be in charge of Apollo and be the pilot. Because she's going to have to do that anyway. And then while she's doing that, Sebastian can to landing proficiency. Oh, well, that was quick. Um, okay, I didn't realize it was gonna take 
such a short time. <laughs> Is there something wrong with the landing proficiency? I feel like landing is more complicated than that, but okay, uh, alright, so that won't take very long, hopefully. Alright, meanwhile the uncrewed version of the mission is building, we'll pick up the contract for crewed lunar orbit, so that's ready to go. Hopefully their proficiencies with Apollo won't like run out or anything. We'll get... Should I train for the mission yet? I don't know how long that takes. A hundred and forty-eight days. Well, it takes two hundred and twenty-two days right now to build the rocket, so I guess we don't have to rush on that. Okay, so we can follow our Jupiter mission as it approaches Jupiter after all, and tries to make orbit. There's Jupiter. Okay, we're all good. Seems like we've lost Delta V. Well, it's already checkmarked the periapsis. Just a matter of getting into orbit. Our periapsis is actually lower than I was expecting, but still out of its atmosphere, I think. So, we're pointed in the wrong direction. Okay, we got Jupiter space low. Wow. Pretty darn close to Jupiter. Can we... Do we have enough to actually capture? Let's find out. Well, it just changed to Delta V, so okay. Uh, mass spectrometry is the only thing still running down here. Everything else is done. We've got a bundle of science, as usual. Make sure we get the Kerbal map approved capture. Okay, that's pretty good. And I'll save about 100 meters per second there. Is it happy? It's checking the orbit. It is happy. We got Jupiter orbit. Okay. And we'll just reorient to the sun for now. You can see Earth right there. Do we like hit Io? I don't think so. Let's see. Nope, we can't get up there. I mean, it's not far, far. 300 meters per second, that would have been plausible, but not with what we have right now. Okay, so anyway, but it survived. It had the comms, it had the power, it had the power. And yeah. So. Let's get the vanity shot of it spinning near Jupiter. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.